I forgot that the only conversation that can happen on the internet today between anybody is a conversation that leaves out a lot of context. Now, Paul Tassi decided to release an article today, very early this morning, stipulating that Dragon Age The Veil Guard is breaking records on PC. But there's a lot of context involved in that. Now, there are also a lot of other people on the other side of the aisle releasing information about Dragon Age The Veil Guard and the numbers, and they're also leaving out context. So, with the context that I was able to gather to the best of my ability, let's talk about the numbers of Dragon Age The Veil Guard and go through this and actually use our brains for once. Welcome to the video. That's right, Dragon Age The Veil Guard is the hot topic in gaming right now. It's the hot topic in gaming, it's the hot topic in the culture war, it's just a hot topic. It gets a lot of views on YouTube, and to be perfectly honest, the thing that matters to me the most about this is how it's going to sell, what the numbers are going to do, and what does the future of gaming look like when it comes to this game, the gaming world in general, and Bioware as a company. So, let's get into it. Over here on Forbes. <clears throat> Paul Tassi, Dragon Age The Veil Guard, sets EA BioWare player count records on Steam. There's a lot of qualifiers there. Sets EA, one that's one qualifier, BioWare player count records on Steam. A lot of qualifiers there. There's three qualifiers right there. So let's scroll down and see what he has to say briefly. And then we're going to move on and we're going to talk about a few other things as well. Dragon Age The Veil Guard is a hit. After largely positive reviews that appear to have uh, translated into sales and a player count that has broken records on PC. Boy, that's interesting. I happen to remember Pal World earlier this year breaking earlier this year breaking records, hitting over like two million concurrent players. I also happen to remember Hell Divers hitting records, break and breaking those records, and also hitting quite a few players. I remember last year Baldur's Gate three hit records, and it was a, quite a bit. So what does he mean here? This game has now beaten. Uh, on 2023's A Star Wars Last Jedi Survivor, which peaked at 67,855 players. That is not necessarily the best game to compare this to, but we will move on. Uh, Dragon Age The Veil Guard hit 70,414 players and is currently the best selling game on Steam. When he wrote this article, that was true. That has, however, changed, and I will show that to you here in a minute. Surpassing even Call of Duty Black Ops, Black Ops 6. Guys, it sold better than Call of Duty Black Ops 6. And there's caveats. Again, I don't think that Paul is lying about the information that he's giving you, but he's not adding the proper context here, and that's where we need to look into this, okay? I've seen the game being compared unfavorably to Baldur's Gate 3, which put up an all-time peak of 800, 875,343 players, but that was a largely PC-focused release, and few dispute it's one of the best RPGs of all time, okay? Even if it's well-liked, few would claim that about Veilguard. Yeah, I don't think a lot of people would say that Veilguard is the best RPG of all time. So as we can see here, he releases that a very short thing. You can see the trend here on Steam as well. Those numbers are higher today. Okay, the Veilguard is also now racking up Steam user reviews, which sits mostly at a positive 79 score. Yes, it is. I've gone through a lot of the Steam uh, reviews as well. I would strongly suggest you do. A lot of them are people who have incredibly limited time in the game. Let me, let me touch on that really quickly. So a lot of the reviews that we saw very early on were people who had 50 hours to 100 hours in the game. That is something that I don't take lightly. Now, I do not, however, believe that a lot of the reviews that came out from mainstream sources were, in fact, reviews that were necessarily weighted properly. I think EA carefully curated from their marketing department reviews that they thought were going to be positive towards the game and chose those specific companies to review and only gave out review codes to those that they thought would review it favorably. Now, any good marketing director would do exactly that. However, when a hot topic like this happens in the gaming world, 
we're gonna sniff that stuff out. And it does seem like that may or may not be the thing. Here's the thing, when it comes to user reviews, I don't actually think anybody's going to have an, a, a decent review for about a week. It's, it, from what I've heard, it's about 50 hours to get through the game. I don't have 50 hours in a week to play video games. I have like maybe five, maybe 10 hours, maybe. I don't have that much time in a week to play a video game, but for those that do, I would expect it to take about a week for people to get through the game completely and entirely and then give a full review. So user reviews that only have about 10 hours in the game, that only have 0.5 hours in the game, which I've seen, I write off completely. You play the game. If you're going to leave a review, play the whole product, review the whole product. Don't half-ass it. I'm sorry, that's annoying, it's irritating. If I'm trying to see, oh, how long did this person spend in a 50 hour RPG, <laughs> two and a half hours? Yeah, I'm gonna write you off because I've played 50 hour RPGs before and two and a half hours barely gets you out of the tutorial zone in most of them. Let's continue. <clears throat> Moving on over here to uh, <clears throat> Steam DB. The Steam DB charts as of right now, the Steam DB charts show 77,000. 465 players currently. Let me refresh the page for you. Okay, and that seems to be accurate as of right now. Now the Twitch stats are showing that 91,000 viewers are watching this. So there seems to be more people interested in watching than people interested in playing. That's kind of an interesting point. In top sellers, as of right now, it is number two in the top sellers and I can show you that over on Steam as well. Okay, the negative reviews are at 12, uh, 100. The positive reviews are at 4,500. We're just rounding be for the sake of uh, brevity, ladies and gentlemen. And overall, the positives are saying that it's a 78. So a 7.8. Let's move that decimal. It's a 7.8 for most people, it seems. All right. Open Critic has not yet opened it up to the player ratings yet, but it is sitting at a 77 over on Open Critic. So. That being said, Metacritic over here, a 2.5 user review. Let me refresh this really quickly. A 2.5 user review or out of 1,003 user ratings. So it seems that a lot of people, uh, we've got the PS5, I'll view all platforms. So this is specifically with PS5. A lot of people are going in here. Now, again, the game has only been out for a day. How can somebody play a 50 hour RPG and leave a concise review of the entire game for everybody to see? Again, if you're going to review a game, don't go in with your hot takes in a couple of hours, play the whole freaking thing, then leave a review. I just think that's the most honest way to do it. If you still hate it and it's still a 2.5, that is fine. I got no issues with it. Like I said, Dragon Age the Veil Guard lost me when they did a bunch of the political injections. That is something that I am not a fan of in games, and so I avoid them. And I actually think I'm going to do a video to break down everything because I see so many people using political language in the wrong way. Most people are wrong, I'm sorry. They, they just are, they just are. We'll cover that in the next video. That's gonna take me a little while to put together. Moving forward here, here are some more reviews. I actually thought this one was quite interested or quite interesting here. This review from Lamplight over on Steam with 9.2 hours. Uh, I just, and the only reason that I thought this one was interesting is just because of the words, because I've been combing over this and just trying to see what people are saying. This is first the elephant in the room. Bigots are going to review bomb this game because you can pick your character's pronouns. That's it, plain and simple, ignore them, moving on. TLDR, this game carries significant flaws and a general lack of polish that has become endemic of the AAA industry as a whole. That's a really interesting take. I I was not expecting that. However, should they have left the review after 9.2 hours? Mm, no. Again, throw that one out. Give me the whole game. Let's get uh, let's bump that up to a 50 hours or 25 hours and say, hey, I beat the game, whatever. Over here, we've got the top sellers right now. Currently, Dragon Age: The Veil Guard is sitting at number two under Black Ops 6. Now. Does that bode well for Dragon Age The Veil Guard? I don't, financially, I don't know. In the eyes of the public who are just looking at review scores or selling scores, they're going to look at this and say, see, 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 it didn't, no, shut up, okay? 
Call of Duty is Call of Duty. I was talking with my buddy the other day about this. Call of Duty is just going to stay in its own lane. That, it's, like, you can't even, I, I told him, I was like, I wouldn't even, like, call, call, I wouldn't even categorize Call of Duty in the first-person shooter genre, because it's just Call of Duty. People are just going to buy it because it's Call of Duty. It's just, I don't know what fairy dust they've sprinkled over that IP to just constantly get people going back and back and back and just buying this thing. But the fact of the matter is, is Call of Duty is a really, really bad comparison to Dragon Age The Veil Guard. It just is. It's just one of those things I just think is. Over here, the most played games. Let's refresh this really quickly. The most played games, right? The peak today. Counter-Strike. How do you have that many players? What are you doing? But it's free to play. Banana, free to play. Dota 2, free to play. Call of Duty, we already talked about it. This is, the again, it's, it's Call of Duty. It's in its own class. Throne and Liberty, free to play. PUBG Battlegrounds, free to play. Monster Hunter Wilds Beta Test. If I am not mistaken, that is also free to play. Rust some money there factorio there's some money there grand theft auto 5 again fairy dust in its own regard dragon age the veil guard sitting here in the 11th spot all right all of that information is important when we're trying to see what exactly this means for the future of bioware and ea so let's go into that to the best of my ability and the information that I have gathered over the years. What I can see right now is that Dragon Age the Veil Guard currently has about a give or take 80,000 people, 77,000 people. We'll just round up to 80. Let's make the numbers nice and easy. So 80,000 people over on PC playing on Steam. Uh, there's probably a few here and there, but let's go the big three, PC, Xbox, PlayStation. Okay, the big three. If we say that we triple that 80,000 number, what is that? What does that add up to? 240,000, right? 240,000 concurrent players, give or take across all platforms. And that is wild speculation on my part. That is a thousand percent wild speculation on my part. But I would guesstimate that this game is probably only sold based off of that if you 10x that number, because that tends to be what I've seen. If I'm wrong, please let me know please if you guys have more succinct information as to what you've seen with player counts online versus total sales before and you can say hey we can actually see an industry trend that player counts online are about this much whereas sales are usually about this much uh and it usually i've i, I think it's about a 10x we can say that there are about 1.5 to 2 million sales give or take based off of the information that I know. I don't think that's a financially viable game for Bioware. Oh, one of the other things, by the way, for it breaking records, and I almost forgot about this, so let's go back to the screen real quick, and I do apologize, we'll get back to the other conversation. But over here, they were saying that it's the, it, it's breaking records, because no Dragon Age game has ever done this on Steam. Well, ladies and gentlemen, no Dragon Age game has ever debuted on Steam. It was either on EA's uh, EA Play, or back in the day it was Origins, and you could play it there and download it there, or you could get it on freaking disc. Remember those days? Yeah, I was there. I remember those days. But again, to say that it is selling better than any Dragon Age game with a higher player count than any Dragon Age game on Steam is disingenuous. It's leaving out the context that the only time you saw Dragon Age games before on Steam were re-releases or they just ported it over and dropped the ports on Steam. That is a critical context flaw that Paul Tassi left out, at least from what I read and from the headline. Maybe he didn't, I don't know. We'll go back, maybe we can read some more. So what does all of this information together mean for the numbers of Dragon Age? And I know there are a lot of people that are gonna click on this video and they want me to talk about the culture war stuff, but I'm gonna save the culture war conversation for a future thing because I think everybody in the culture war conversation is radically wrong they've lost their definitions and they have no idea what they're talking about and i'm gonna be honest that's how i feel about it but i'll release that video if you guys want to see that video subscribe hear my take on it i'm gonna start throwing shots at everybody because i'm just tired of it what does this mean for the numbers here 
if I am correct, and it is in fact 10x the number of what we can see concurrently from Steam to like Xbox, PlayStation, we'll just call that. And I am being gracious here by saying that there's 80,000 players on all of those platforms for Dragon Age the Veilware. We're at about 240,000 concurrent players, which would add up to, if my 10x number works, about 2.4 million in sales, roughly at about $65 because you've got the steam is 60 bucks and then other platforms are 70 bucks and then there's deluxe editions let's just say 65 dollars that roughly adds up to a little over excuse me uh that roughly adds up to a little uh, about 200 million dollars so the question is and then marketing and all of that so the question is how close to breaking even in their opening week are they because we know this from game, from gaming, from entertainment in general. That first week is critical. That first week in sales is critical. And the word of mouth is also critical. And this is why I happen to think that EA selectively chose who they were gonna give review codes to, hoping that all of them were going to be positive because any good marketing guy worth their salt would have absolutely done that. Absolutely. No questions asked. If you're a good marketing guy, you don't give your product to somebody who's going to do a bad review. You give your product to somebody who's going to do a good review. And anybody's like, these reviewers were lying about what they thought. No, some people just really like stuff you probably don't like. I guarantee I like movies out there and I like books out there and I like video games out there that you guys don't like. Doesn't matter. What we need to understand about this entire thing is how it's being played up to cover the to cover the story for the investors of EA and BioWare and present to them great numbers. Did this game actually sell well enough to cover the budget of Veilguard? What was the budget of Veilguard? Do we know? Does anybody have any lines on that? Because I don't. I looked for it. I couldn't find it. I would imagine they're not going to release that. Now, they say it took 10 years for this game to come out. They say it took 10 years for this game to come out. At 10 years for this game to come out, at 250 people, the average salary is two, is $100,000 in the gaming industry. That adds up to like $25 million a year. Times 10, that's $250 million in development plus marketing. Was this game really over 300 million, 400 million, 500 million? I don't know. I don't know how large the team was that worked on it. I probably could have looked that up before I did this. And you know what? If you guys have looked it up, let me know how many people worked down below because the numbers are interesting to me. BioWare was a company back in the day that you could trust was going to release a game and it was going to hit. And when it hit, it was going to hit hard and everybody loved them. Most of that talent has left and you can go look up how many people have left Bioware from the old Bioware starting in about 2015 to now. There's not a lot of those original teams left. Story writing has changed radically. And to be perfectly honest with everybody, it's no longer Bioware. It hasn't been Bioware for a long time. The reason that I wanted to drop this video is because I'm interested in seeing what's the future of Bioware. Are they done? Are they gone? Did they make the money? Or did they not make the money? That's the fun thing for me to think about because I'm ridiculous and I like numbers. So guys, let me know what you think in the comments down below. If you would like to hear my thoughts on some other issues happening in the gaming world or just issues that happened in, you know, general pop culture, there are some videos popping up on the screen right now. You can click on those. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. And as always, until next time, cheers, everybody.